Metals and Microwaves If you've ever wondered why there's such a taboo on putting metals in the microwave, well, want to know more. First, it should be noted that it is not unsafe to put all metals in the microwave. Indeed, you often put metals in the microwave any time you put a hot pocket in the little pouch and place it in the microwave. The pouch has a thin layer of aluminium lining the inside that is designed to absorb the microwaves and heat up a bit so as to brown the outside of the hot pocket. On top of that, the inside walls of your microwave are often made of metal. If you look closely, you'll also see that the window you look at the food through also has metal mesh lining it. The holes in this mesh are smaller than the wavelengths of the electromagnetic radiation your microwave is producing. This makes it so the waves can't pass through the holes. Visible light, however, is comprised of much smaller wavelengths, so that form of radiated energy passes through the holes just fine, allowing you to see inside your microwave while it's running without getting cooked yourself. So, if the inside of your microwave is lined with metal and certain food products such as hot pockets and pot pies have containers that contain metal, why does your microwave manual say not to put metal in the microwave? First, let's talk a little about how a microwave oven actually works. At its core, a microwave oven is a pretty simple device. It's basically just a magnetron hooked up to a high voltage source. This magnetron directs microwaves into a metal box. These generated microwaves then bounce around inside the microwave until they are absorbed via dielectric loss in various molecules, resulting in the molecules heating up. Matter that works well here are things such as water, ceramics, certain polymers, etc. These all end up converting microwave energy into heat quite effectively by a process known as dielectric heating. Basically, molecules such as water molecules are electric dipoles. This means that they have a positive charge and a negative charge on opposite ends. Thus, they will rotate themselves rapidly when trying to align themselves with the alternating electric field from the microwaves. As these molecules rub against each other, they heat up and, as they do, they themselves also become part of the cooking process, heating up molecules around them that may not be absorbing much or any of the microwaves. Metals, on the other hand, are great conductors of electricity, being packed with electrons that can move freely. Depending on the shape, type, thickness, distribution, etc. of metal, you may observe some heating of the metal itself in the microwave, or none at all. You may also observe some arcing of electricity, or none at all. What's going on here is that when these microwaves hit the metal, free electrons on the surface of the metal end up moving from side to side very rapidly. This in turn prevents the electric wave from entering the metal, thus the waves end up being reflected instead. However, there is also the potential that this ends up creating a sufficient charge density that the electrical potential in the metal object exceeds the dielectric breakdown of air. When this happens, it will result in arcing inside your microwave, from that metal to another electrical conductor with lower potential, often the wall of the microwave. In extreme cases, these electrical sparks can end up damaging the wall by burning small holes in it. It can also end up burning out the magnetron in your microwave oven, or in modern microwaves, can provide a surge that ends up damaging sensitive microelectronics, possibly killing your microwave or making it unsafe to use in the case of a hole in the inner metal wall in your microwave. Another way it can kill the magnetron of your microwave is when enough of the generated microwaves don't get absorbed, such as if the food is wrapped in aluminium foil or mostly enclosed in a metal container, or if you just run the microwave empty for long enough. On a more mundane level, something like a spoon or metal plate or the like, positioned correctly, will simply make your food potentially not cook normally. On that note, once again, it is actually acceptable to put metal in a microwave under the proper conditions. Some microwaves even have metal grates inside them for setting food on, such is often the case with certain convection ovens. There are also certain types of metal pots and pans that are microwave safe. These all, however, are carefully designed not to cause any problems in your microwave oven. In general, putting metal in the microwave is unsafe, not because you are at risk of bodily harm or the like, though in extreme cases a fire might start in your microwave, but more to the point, primarily because it has the potential of damaging your microwave. Bonus Facts Metal powder at room temperature does a good job of absorbing microwave radiation. When it does so, it heats up. It's not wholly understood what is going on here, but it is known that if the metal particle size is less than 100 micrometers, the particle will absorb microwaves instead of reflecting them. 
This is generally how the microwave pouches, such as come with hot pockets or pot pies, work, though they sometimes use a form of ceramic instead, with the same effect of generating heat to brown the outside of the food. These pouches and containers, meant for browning, are also known as susceptors. Bonus Fact 2 the type of radiation emitted by microwave ovens is non-ionizing. This means that it doesn't contribute to your chances of getting cancer, like x-rays, ultraviolet lights, etc. do. Outside of the potential burn risks, experiments done with rodents have yet to show any major adverse effect to prolonged exposure to microwaves at the 2.45 GHz range seen in most microwave ovens, even with continual low-level exposure. Bonus Fact 3 the particular band of microwaves produced by typical microwave ovens, 2.45 GHz, was chosen primarily due to the fact that it is a frequency set aside for non-communication uses. Within the available frequencies that are not set aside for communication, 2.45 GHz was chosen because 433.92 MHz would require expensive equipment to generate sufficient power to heat food, 5.8 GHz and 24.125 GHz would require a much higher cost on electricity used to run the oven, and 915 MHz was rejected as it wasn't a band available worldwide, as 2.45 GHz was. 915 MHz, though, is occasionally used used in industrial microwave ovens. Bonus Fact 4 Electromagnetic waves were predicted by James Clerk Maxwell in 1864. It wasn't until 1888 that Heinrich Hertz was able to build a device that was capable of producing and detecting microwaves. His device used a horse trough, laden jars, a zinc gutter, worked as an antenna, and a wrought iron point spark. Bonus Fact 5 The first known documented use of the term microwave was in 1931 in a telegraph and telephone journal. When trials with wavelengths as low as 18 cm were made known, there was an undisguised surprise that the problem of the microwave had been solved so soon. Bonus Fact 6 Even though most microwave ovens let you choose between power levels, there generally isn't any change in the frequency level of the microwaves being generated. Rather, it simply changes the duty cycle of the magnetron. In other words, it turns on and off at a different rate. Bonus Fact 7 A convection oven is basically just a conventional microwave that also has a way to brown food, like a traditional oven. In order to provide this browning effect, the convection oven may use traditional oven heating elements or might use something such as a high-powered halogen bulb. Bonus Fact 8 The ability to use microwaves as a heating device for food was originally discovered by an engineer by the name of Percy Spencer. Spencer was working on building magnetrons for radar sets. One day, he was standing in front of an active radar set when he noticed the candy bar he had in his pocket melted. Upon noticing this, Spencer made the monumental mistake of telling other people instead of keeping it to himself and working on it on his own. He and some other experimenters began trying to heat other food objects, presumably to get out of actually working while they were at work. The first one he heated intentionally was popcorn, the second was an egg, which ended up exploding in the face of one of his co-workers. Spencer then created what we might call the first true microwave oven by attaching a high-density electromagnetic field generator, which would then shoot into a metal box so that the electromagnetic waves would have no way to escape and the oven would be much more efficient and safe. He then placed various food items in the box and monitored their temperature to observe the effect. The company Spencer was working for, Raytheon, then filed a patent on October 8, 1945 for a microwave cooking oven, eventually named the Radar Range. The first commercial microwave oven was about 6 feet tall and weighed around 750 pounds. The price tag on these units was about $5,000 apiece. It wasn't until 1967 that the first microwave oven that was both relatively affordable $495 and reasonably sized countertop model was available. Further, it wasn't until microwave ovens became extremely popular in the 1970s that they were commonly known as microwave ovens. Before that, they were typically known as electronic ovens. Bonus Fact 9 Forks are particularly susceptible to sparking in a microwave due to the fact that their tines are relatively close together and will produce high voltage at the tips. This voltage will exceed the dielectric breakdown of air, which is about 3 MV per meter. The air then forms a kind of conductive plasma, which is the spark you see. This in turn makes the fork an even more effective antenna for the microwaves, worsening the problem. Bonus Fact 10 
Microwaves convert vitamin B12 to an inactive form, which means about 30 to 40 percent of vitamin B12 in microwaved foods is not usable by mammals. On the other hand, spinach loses about 77 percent of its folate when cooked in a normal stove, but retains nearly all of it when cooked in a microwave. In the same way, steamed vegetables, as a rule, tend to retain more of their nutrients in a microwave than when cooked in a traditional oven. Bonus Fact 11 At one time, most long-distance telephone calls were transmitted via a large network of microwave radio relay links, such as AT&T's long lines. In the 1950s, about 5,400 telephone calls could be run through a single microwave channel via multiplexing. The distance between hops was typically around 40 to 50 miles. The additional cost of transmitting this way was a large part of why long distance was so expensive historically. With the advent and installation of fiber optic lines and advanced satellite systems, this made the old ground-based microwave relay links obsolete for transmitting long distance calls, although satellite systems are essentially just a space-based version of this same thing. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.